Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Today is Wednesday, June or July something. I don't know what day it is exactly, but uh, happy to have you with us today, 2017. It's going to be a great day, of course. It's beautiful here in Los Angeles, so wherever you are today, I hope you're making it a great day. The weather is fantastic here, sun is out, of course, just perfect. So wherever you are, I hope you're making it a great day. Lots to discuss with you, of course. So, you know, when the summer is here with us, it's so important that we really are mindful of our diet. And I want to talk to you about that in a way I haven't talked about it before. And that is, so often we think about, well, are we just eating a lot? Well, don't forget, you can also drink in a lot of calories that are not good for you also. So be mindful of what you're eating, but also be mindful of what you're drinking because alcohol, for example, has a lot of empty calories. It's really just a lot of sugar, most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. So you may say, well, you're only eating a salad, but if you have six or seven drinks, well, guess what? That's a lot of empty calories there. It's a lot of alcohol also. So you really want to think about being mindful of what you eat. As I've said before, you are what you eat, drink, and smoke. So really look at your body, and your body will tell you. You know, if you feel too heavy, well, eat a bit less, drink a bit less, exercise more. If you're not feeling good, if your memory's not great, if your libido is down, all these things are not working for you, look at your diet. Look at the level of stress that you have. But more importantly, be good and feel good about yourself. That's what's so important. Why? Because it's only you. You take you wherever you go. So you want to take somebody that feels happy, is healthy, and focused, and that you have a passion for what you're doing. Now, let's talk about passion. You know, I got some emails that I want to address about being focused about your goals and making things happen in your life and when things are slow or if you're living from month to month and everything's a struggle and a strain. Let's talk about that. You know, we all are here to do great things. We all are here for a reason. So I think it's incumbent upon us to always think about the following. Number one, are you happy? Number two, are you doing things that you love? And number three, are you working in an industry that you love so much that if you never got paid, you'd like to get up every day and do that job because it makes you feel good? You know that you're impacting someone's life. You know that you're lifting people up. You know that you're having a good day and that you can share that goodness with someone else. Well, I think when it comes to life, we have to really assess those things as well as assess the people in our lives. Are the people that are surrounding us, are they uplifting? Are they helping us to go where we want to go? Are they reminding us about our greatness? Or do they rip us down? Do they tear us up? Do they destroy us? Do they make you feel like you are, are less than? Do they make you feel like what you're doing in life doesn't matter? That your role in life, what you've chosen to do, is not a good thing? So if you have those people in your lives, then you want to think about this. What can I do? to make my life better? What can I do to minimize the people in my life who don't lift me up? Well, I think you have to do this. Number one, make the decision to say, you know what? You and you and you, you're not good for me. This doesn't work for me. When I call you, I feel worse than I did before I called you. When I go out to dinner with you, I feel less than I did before I had dinner with you, and my wallet is, is less also. I have to pay for the dinner also. So if these things are not working for you, then, you have to have the courage to say bye. And bye is a really good word. You know, bye is just one word you can end it with a period. It has, doesn't have to be a comma, bye, and then explain. You don't have to explain yourself. When people are no longer working our lives, it's okay to say, you know what? This is, this is not a vibrational match. You know, I love you, you don't love me. Okay, well, I have to go. Or, or you're in love with me, but I don't love you, then still, we have to go. So you really want to think about looking at your life in the following way. Are the people there on the same level where you are, or are they higher and they want to bring you up, or are you higher and you want to bring them up? However, the bottom line is this. You really want to be around people that want to help you construct the best possible version of yourself. That's what you want, the best version of you. Not the version that they want you to be. That doesn't really matter. It's the best version of you because that's all that matters. The universe has really constructed in such a really wonderful, magnanimous way that there's only one of us in the whole universe. Therefore, everybody's important. The doctor, the physician is no better than the dog walker, the teacher, the accountant. It's simply a job. 
As I've said so often, as a physician, I'm always aware of what my mother said. She said, well, Levi, are you going to be a doctor? She said, that's great, son. She said, well, keep in mind, son, that you can be the doctor today. And she snapped her fingers and the patient tomorrow. Now, I've never forgotten that. That was 20 years ago. And I think it's so important that, number one, no matter where we are in life, what our station is in life, number one, that we're always humble. Number two, that we treat people the way we want to be treated. And number three, before you speak, to ask yourself the following question. Before you say anything, ask yourself this question. Number one, is it uplifting? Number two, is it true? And number three, does it have to be said? If it's not true, it's not uplifting, doesn't have to be said, what about zip it? Close your mouth. Hold on to your tongue. Say nothing. It's so important to know that words can be very damaging or they can be very uplifting. When it comes to uplifting words, of course, we know that actors and comedians, I think they have an incredible job in media because their words can do just that. They can lift people up. They can bring us to a place out of darkness. They can bring light into any area by just a single joke, by a comment, and sometimes by just simply a look. So, you know, we had on the show many times different actors and comedians because I, I really respect them tremendously because their roads to success and their roads to survival, their roads to victory are not easy roads to take. You know, when it comes to an actor or a comedian, think about it. How many times do they get rejected before they get a job? How many times do they get a job, may have it, and then still get rejected, may not have it the next day? So I have such respect for people who say, you know what? I have a dream to make people laugh. I have a dream to bring forth a character to be something and to project something to make people feel good. So I think it's so important that whatever you choose to do in your life, that you do what actors do, what comedians do. And that is one thing I think they do better than anyone else is they're very strategic about doing things that they love because they know, and we all know too, that Brand is everything. Your brand, your flow is a projection of who you are. So it's important, I think, to have a library of things that you've done that's very diverse, very unusual, and very wonderful, and really well done. But more importantly, to do things that reflect someone's authenticity, to be genuine about what you're projecting, be it comedy or as an actor. It's a, it's a very, very tough road. And uh, I have so many friends who are actors and comedians, and I, and I respect them tremendously because of that. Because th and they tell me, they, they will tell me, Levi, I've gone on 30 or 40 auditions this month or in two weeks, one callback you know, are two callbacks out of 30 or 40 editions. So I think, you know, we should all have great respect for people in media, especially comedians, especially actors, because they go through so much. And, you know, I have a few friends who always say, well, well, Levi, you always say we should get paid a lot. And I, and I believe that. I think actors and comedians should, get, should be paid tremendously. Why? Because they may act today and they may be a comedian today working a gig for maybe a month, a week, maybe three or four months. And after that, they, there may just be silence. But guess what? While there's silence, they still have a family to take care of. They have their wives, their partners, their children, a house, a home, a rent, cars, insurance, food, gas, you know, things have to be paid. So I think get it while you can get it. I think they should be respected. And I think the job in Hollywood, you know, Hollywood is really, it's a very interesting uh, uh, milieu here. It's a very interesting uh, atmosphere here because, you know, it's filled with a lot of people who, who can often tell you that we can get you a job, we can do this for you, we can do that for you. But in the end, it's really you, the comedian, the actor. It's their skill level. It's, it's do they have the look that the role may dictate? Are they the comedian that has the, 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 the fundamentals of what they want to project? I mean, it's a very, very difficult road. So I have just uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, respect for anyone who is willing to have the courage to step onto the road, to go down that, that, that steep path, to call themselves a comedian or an actor. Now, with that said, I want to do a quick medical moment about, about life and about focus. So, so when you have a goal of something you want to achieve, I recommend that you do the following. Number one, write it down. 
Number two, not tell a lot of people that you're going to do this, because then often we have a lot of haters. You know, there's this statement in the Bible that says, never throw your, your pearls before swine. I mean, basically, don't really tell everybody what you're going to do. Just go out and do it. You can talk about it later, but during the process, don't do it. You know, uh, uh, Napoleon Hill, in one of his master series of... Uh, of manifestation, he talks about that also, when you have a master plan, to really not discuss that with a lot of people. However, it's good to have a group of like-minded people that you talk about together so you can brainstorm together and try to do what you can to manifest what you want. And with manifestation, it's all about the following. You want to imagine it and think it, then do it, and then have it. You know, it's really that. You know, we talk about the secret here sometimes of, of just thinking something, making it happen. Well, yeah, that, that can happen. But the bottom line is it takes work to make your life work. You know, life is about making your life work for you and not comparing yourself to what you have to your neighbor. Your neighbor doesn't pay your bills. You don't pay your neighbor's bills. It's all about what's in your bank account. It's all about what the degrees you have. It's all about what school have you finished. It's all about what role that you have. It's all about what the last gig that you had. So really, I think the great thing about life, it gives us an opportunity to really be on this, this soapbox to not compare ourselves to anybody else. You know, because we're all very individual. So it's about living your best possible life. It's about living the best possible version of yourself and being proud of yourself, not worrying about what your brother has, your sister has, what your mother or father thinks that you should do. They really don't count. As much as we may love them and family, let's talk about family for a second. Family can give us more BS sometimes than our friends. And the unfortunate thing is that we're stuck with family, but we can choose our friends. So be careful. Be careful of the friends that we choose. That's very, very important. Be very careful. As my dad would say all the time is, he would say, Levi, show me your friends, and I'll tell you everything about yourself, son. So I think you surround yourself with successful people, and I think that gives you a great opportunity to be successful. If you're a comedian, you surround yourself with funny, hardworking people, well, guess what? You're in that same milieu of being with people who are hardworking and successful and funny. Now, let's talk about our guests today. We have three awesome guests, comedians that will, will knock your socks off, and that I think they have really great stories about what it takes to, to really be in this profession as a comedian, as an actor, uh, what, what, what drives them to do what they do. So I want to really welcome to the show right now, Jimmy Delavalle, and I want to get these names right. If I get them wrong, I'm going to slap myself. Timmy uh-uh, uh, not Timmy, nope. Tim, I'm a, I have to look at this, guys, I'm sorry. Tim Homeyun. I got the nod, so I got it right, so <laughs> I'm feeling good about that, because damn, I thought I was going to F that up. Yeah. I really did. Um, and we got Keith Ross Nelson here today, so I want to say welcome, guys. Happy uh -huh. to have all three of you with us today. So let, let's start with Tim. Okay. Tim, where are you from and how long have you been in this industry? Uh, I'm from uh, Long Island, New York. Yes. I uh, started, uh, I'm a comedian actor, started in about 92, right in high school, and uh, started as a comedian, got into acting, and then uh, moved out to Los Angeles about three years ago. Yes. Now, have you enjoyed being in L.A.? Uh, I enjoy it. It's definitely a, uh, it's a new ball game, even though it's the same, it's... Uh, like a learning curve, I'm getting back on my feet. But uh, the first, you know, year is uh, adjusting. Yeah, definitely an adjustment. Right. It's beautiful out here. Of course, the yeah. weather here. Yeah. This, this is not New York. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you here. Oh, and you. what about work? What has work like been here for you compared to New York? Well, it's exactly uh, like you said before. Is that uh, I'll be on the road, uh, come back, and it's uh, so I'll be working a lot. Then all of yes. a sudden. There's nothing. I'll get silence. Yeah. <laughs> silence. Yeah. I love that. He's silent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, comedy, acting. I'll be fucking acting jobs and then yeah. silence. Uh, nothing. Right. So, yeah, it's that little roller coaster that, like I said, it took me a year to adjust because yes. I was in New York and you kind of get uh, used to it, uh, your patterns, but out here it's a, an adjustment. It is an adjustment. Now, what about family? You have family and friends out here? Uh, I have. Uh, have Jimmy out here, so he. It was good to have someone that I knew that would help me out when I came out uh, here. And uh, my family's still in New York and uh, still waiting for me to visit. You know, right. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Now, what what do your family think about your career choice? 
at first was a little, I guess, you know, a typical uh, family. My father was a doctor like yourself. Yes. Uh, my mother was a nurse. Brother's a lawyer. So for me to become a comedian was a little something they uh, didn't expect. Um, right. So it took a little adjusting. Then uh, I started with, with a guy uh, most people know is Kevin James. And yes. they saw his success as other people that I worked with gain success. So they're kind of like, okay, right. maybe he'll. You can do it. Yeah. So that helped. And then... Um, they started coming to the shows, and they started seeing it, and and, uh, and luckily I did well, so they were kind of, again, with the show. Okay. Exactly. You know. Well, we're happy that you're here. Okay. We have a lot more questions for you, though. And Jimmy Delavalle, great to have you with us also. Again, you've been here before. You're a master comedian. So, you know, having someone here as a friend who's visiting, what are the things that you would share with him to get him focused on the road that you've chosen, which is not an easy road, period. It's just not. Well, I have one word for Dr. Levi. Yes. See, it's it's Della Valley. Della Valley. <laughs> yes. So my, so my second word is by period. By period. I love that. I love Dr. Levi. Right. After the poor guy Listen. tries to do right. Tim's name, right. and now you're going to do that to him. Right. The poor man yeah. having a nervous breakdown right. over Tim's name, and you're going to do that right. to him. Man. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so the, the question was again about... Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what are the things that you shared with him when he first got here to, to introduce him to this market in, in, in Hollywood and Los Angeles? Well, see, Tim is uh, a great comedian, yes. a great writer, yes. a great actor, which uh, we'll talk later about our sitcom that we created. It's now going to be on Amazon Prime. Um, but he's not a good networker. It's always been his downfall. Now, once you meet Tim, which Keith has now found out, you can't get Tim to shut up. Right, right, right. But Tim is like, he's very shy. Like, we would sit in major Hollywood parties, like with Jim Gaffigan or Chris Rock, Louis C.K., and me and Tim would just be kind of just talking. I'm like, we could have just did this in my apartment. Right, right, right. Like, why are we here? Right, right, <laughs> we're right, sitting right. here. You gotta meet Tim's like, folks. well, we're here because of the dip. Like, right. the dip. <laughs> That's the, like, we're sitting there alone, and I'm going, we have to mingle. He's like, I know, I know what to mingle. Right, you got to. Like, you know, so that's, and I'm good at networking. Yes. But sometimes, um, you know, I'll come off very cocky, but meanwhile, I'm actually very insecure. You know, as an actor or comedian, you're very insecure. So I try to tell Tim, never knock himself in this right. business. Right. Even if things are silent, right. don't let nobody know it's silent. Correct. No one needs to know. Correct. I was on stage one time with uh, um, uh, Damon Wayans years ago, and um, I had this, this horrible uh, set. It wasn't a horrible set, but I felt it was a horrible set. Yes, yes. And the audience is coming up to me after, and this is such a bad mistake that I made, and I'll never forget it. And I go, uh, I, I, they're coming up, they go, oh, you were great. I go, ah, yeah, I don't know, you know, just didn't work for me. They, no, no, you were great. Like, and people are literally telling me. Right, that they and enjoy And then Damon it. takes me into the alley on the side of the club outside, because we were outside, and he goes, don't, they don't know. They have no idea that you didn't kill. They right. think you killed. You might have think you could yeah. do better, yeah. but I was so. I was like, you know what? That's it. Yes. I've always keep it ha up. Have a have a, a positivity. That's right. what I love always. about Doctor Levi. Always. With the positivity, right. he makes me feel better about myself. And uh, you know that that that's the thing. And I'm always trying. Tim is Tim has that that insecurity where he's so talented. He's like one of my favorite comedians. I mean. <sighs> And uh, I've been there for his ups and downs, and he's here now, and we're doing great, and we're, we're, we're loving That's loving fantastic. It, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, all I can say is welcome, Tim. Thank you. L.A.'s waiting for you. Yeah. You got to grab it. Yep. You know, be fearless. Be courageous. Yeah. Knock some, some doors. Go to some meetings. Shake some hands. Meet people. But you have to – L.A. is a really interesting place, I think, too, because it, it's – I always think of New York this way. One of my best friends is a comic in New York, actually, and uh, – he always said that New York, there's no veneer. It's tough. Mm -hmm. He said the weather's tough, the people are tough, the auditions are tough. He said, well, you come to L.A., then there's this veneer. The weather's beautiful, very tropical. People are beautiful. I mean, New York has beautiful people also. Uh, people are really fit, and it just looks like easy. But in the end, you know, are you working? Is the rent going to get paid? You have money to eat, have gas, have a car. I mean, he would always say it, it here you can get um, 
the magic of LA can make you feel like you're doing something when you're really not. You said in New York, you got to get in. You see, you got to get in, you got to make it happen because it's, it takes no prisoners. You either survive and you're successful or you just you just scratch your way through. It's it's you know, your professions are really intense. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a joke. And what about yourself now? Keith Ross Nelson. Yeah. Got that right. Uh I you know, it was funny cuz your opening yes. was like seeing my life from the bad to the good it's all in good a nutshell. You. Yes. Because what I really liked what you said um uh, and I'll, I'll I'll take a sidebar to sure. what you said. Sure. My wife, who I've now been married to for nine and a half years. Wow! Congratulations. Okay, and uh, I'll leave her in a in a coffin. Okay, sure. you see sure. what I'm saying? Yes. But for I, I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> <laughs> that means bye. That means bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That means bye. Right. What is? What is? He's going to kill his wife? No, 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 no. I, no, no. I, I leave, leave. <laughs> not she I'll leave. leave. Her in yeah, a we don't want to. Yeah, no, no. That, that's a, that's the life insurance part of it. <laughs> I never heard that's the life insurance part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I've shared too much. Let's go back to And I'm Italian. Is that like sleeping with the fishes? I'll leave her in a coffin. Yeah. So, She's in a coffin. Okay. No, <laughs> but from 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 twenty to fifty, yes, nothing but drama queens. Yes, and then I have one that just messed my head up so bad. I said, I got to make some changes. Right. So this goes back to your opening, like your mom saying, you can be the doctor, but you can be the patient the next day. Yes. And I literally did this. I took a piece of paper, and I drew a line right down the mis middle of the piece of yes. paper, and I said. These are seven things, and it could be five, seven, yes. whatever. But I chose seven. These are seven things I will not put up with in a woman. Right. These are seven things I want in a woman. Right. Now, if she does one of those things that I don't want, I'm going to tell her one time, if you do that again, then you're done. We're done. Can I get that list? Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> it's, too, it's list. too late. You're already married to her. Now, yeah. Too. yeah, you got to do that before you get married. <laughs> Once you're married, you're stuck with a list. I need that list. And... I went with one more girl after that. She did it. I said, if you do that, she did it again. I said, we're done. So it doesn't matter how beautiful the girl no. is, how hot she is, or da-da-da. You stick to that list. Right, right. The next person I met was my wife. So it was a match. It, it's like unbelievable match. Right, right. And literally after that, I met a guy from England yes. who was a, the biggest, second biggest agent over there. He used to be Ricky Gervais's agent. And like he was like doing consulting over there. So I met my wife and him. Then I started taking Kung Fu. And that guy that I did Kung Fu with yes. was a lot of what you said up front, you know. And what I wanted to jump on, what you said, sure. is I came up with a couple other rules. That was one, and that changed my life. And the other ones was, I remember Chris Rock was on Oprah. And she asked him a question. I never forgot this. She said, what's the best thing anybody ever told you? And he said, my dad. He told me when I was 16 years old, he said, Never be the smartest person in the room. Mm. And I took that. Very powerful statement. I, I, I adjusted a little bit. But my thing was, after I met my wife, is I'm like, I'm not going to hang around anybody that isn't as nice as me and as smart as me. Mm. They can be on my level, preferably smarter. Right. That goes right back to what you said about the find people that are above you. Exactly. And let them bring you up. Absolutely. These guys are easily as smart as me. They're good guys. They always... Right. Every time he says he's going to be somewhere, he's there. Yeah, absolutely. This, I relate with that. Right. So that's what, when you were sitting here talking, I was like, I could hardly contain myself. I <laughs> really? go, well, I've never heard anybody in a five-minute span, wow, it's like he crammed everything I've learned into one five-minute mm -hmm. thing. Great, that's great, what you great. just did. Perfect. You know, uh, so it, it was like, wow, that was really very powerful. Well, I thank you for that. Now, and I want to know from yourself now, too, why, for you, Keith, why did you choose comedy as a career? What was the, you know, was it something that you were doing as a child? Were you always funny as a child? Or was it a true career like you just knew inside that this is what you wanted to do? I kind of did it. It, it kind of happened, but I, it's kind of half and half. Yes. Because when I was in college, you know, you go to the lectures. Right. You know, when you're in high school, the, all the classes are 40 minutes. You Correct. go to a lecture in these big you know, halls, 300 people, sometimes they're 90 minutes. Correct. So it was hard for me, you know, and he'll, they'll relate with this, you know, or, you know, if you're a high motor, to have an attention span of 90 minutes 
is hard. Right. So I'd be sitting in the middle of the room and I would crack jokes to the <laughs> professor. Not at his expense, right. but just to keep me engaged. Right. And then one of my friends goes, oh, you should try stand you know, doing stand-up. And then as soon as I tried it, that was like, that oh, was this is like... Wow. And that's what hooked. And then what about your siblings and family? What do they think about that career choice? You know what? My mom's been very... She's always been do what... What you want It's do. interesting because there's a split there, too, because my mom, very supportive. My dad and my stepmom... Right. Fall well to the right Christians. You yes. know, yes. Fox News always tells the truth. CNN is a bunch of liars. You know? <laughs> right. I'm more right. of that middle of the road yeah, Christian. Yes. Where, well, sometimes they lie and sometimes they lie. <laughs> You're supposed to be in the middle and figure out who's lying and who's telling the right. truth. Right. Right. That's right. your truth job. Right. You're not supposed to just believe what they tell right. you or they tell you. Right. So they're very against it, but it's like that. Those are like what you, that goes right back to what you said at the yes. beginning. The people that don't want to support you. Even in your family, you can still love them, oh, yes, but you definitely. can also say, you know what? When they're around, yeah, I'll, I'll deal with them. Right. But, you know, it's like that uncle you see once a year for two hours at Christmas at the children's right. table. Yes. We all know he's going to get drunk, and we all know we're going to go sit him in the <laughs> Lazy Boy, and right. somebody's going to drive him home. Right. But we don't hang around the other 364 <laughs> days <laughs> we a year, We do right? not, exactly. That's what, uh, yeah. Just yeah. leave that uncle in the yeah. coffin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with leave that uncle in the coffin. <laughs> Next to the wife. <laughs> with you on the way out. Right, yeah. right, right. But the person that supports you, that's the person you attach at the hip. Yes. Now, when it comes to comedy, when you, when you guys look at your lives, who are the heroes in comedy for each of you? Tim, who would you say, like, one or two people that you can think of historically, you know, it could be anyone from the... I was going to say some names. I'll wait until you. I have my own. I want to hear what you're going to say first. I mean, I, when I uh, started watching stand-up, guys like Eddie Murphy, uh, Kevin James, who I, I looked up to uh, since I could see him perform a lot, uh, guys like that kind of influenced me. There was a guy, Bob Nelson, who's a comedian from uh, New York also. Uh, those guys I looked up to, Rodney Dangerfield, who uh, he was funny. is great. And he had... Uh, uh, his own specials where he would showcase comedians, and I was just addicted to watching those, and that kind of influenced me to, to become a comedian and also to f watch those guys' careers and yes. kind of further my own career. Those are amazing comics there that you just mentioned. All of them have such great historic value, I mean, of great legacies oh, yeah. in comedy yeah. and great ways of, I think... Uh, Diffuse in all situations, just come in and just make you laugh, no matter where you are, yeah. no matter what's going on politically or historically, they can always bring it. Mm -hmm. You know, what about yourself, Jimmy? Um, <coughs> you know, it's funny, yesterday was uh, um, Father's Day, and what, what uh, I really started thinking about, like my dad and how much of an influence he had in my, yes. my career, and uh, thinking about my act for, you know, well over 20 years, thinking to myself, I, I say anything. I go stereotypical. I go edgy. I go this. Uh, but I, I have that likability. And I think it has something to do with uh, that that confidence of, like, my father would always, like, flirt with the waitress right in front of my mother. It didn't matter. Right. You know, she's like, uh, you know, w w would you like, uh, you know, Coke? Or my dad would say, hey, can I get a Pepsi? Right. And she'd go, no, we... Uh, I'm sorry, we have Coke. Is that okay? No, it is not okay. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm never coming here again. Do you have You would say that? Yeah. Every, you really? every time. Really? Right? And then he would go, how about root beer? And she goes, and, uh, and, and he goes, but only mug. Only mug root beer. <laughs> and this girl came back breaking his balls. I'll never really? forget. She comes back and she goes, sir. It's in a mug. <laughs> and, like it's, and it's Coke. <laughs> and, and my mom goes, good for you. Good really? for you, yeah. sweetie. Really? And my dad goes, well, I'm not tipping her. <laughs> it was, and that's how I grew up. Right. He would always flirt with the waitress. Always. And, and as I always, and, <laughs> you know, and I always <laughs> flirt or look. I mean, I love my wife to death, but I look at women. My dad was right. always like, you're not dead. You look until you're dead. Right. You know, that was always this thing. Or until you're in the coffin. Or in yeah, the coffin. until you're in the coffin, right? right. Yeah. I was going to do that. would have been a little hacky. Right. <laughs> That's why I'm over in the third chair and I'm not in the middle. Because right. I'm a hack. Uh -huh. You're not a hack. No, no you're not. So it, it, it was so funny just to see him, the way he would always, like I remember playing basketball. Right. Like I was a real good basketball player and uh, 
my brother-in-law is African American, yes. and we, you know, and I was real good. I won the uh, milk shoot, foul sh shooting contest right. in the big colleges at Syracuse University. It was insane. And we're playing in the hood. Me, my dad, we're the only two white guys and all the brothers. Right. And we're playing, and they've never seen my dad. And my dad's like in his uh, 50s at this point. Right. And, and we're there, and then all of a sudden, you said, my brother-in-law, my little black brother-in-law, he's like five foot six or something, right. and my dad's like five five nine, an Italian attitude. Right. And and and, uh, and you hear foul, but I oh, no foul! <laughs> I'll give you a foul right now! You think? My dad's taking his Just belt like that? off. He's taking Was his he really? belt off to fight the guy, and I'm like, what are you gonna hit him? Like, he's a black guy! This ain't Roots, you can't beat a black guy. What do you think? Goes, no, no, I wrap it around my hand. It's a better hit. I learned that in the army. Is he saying you're dead? Yeah, he's gonna wrap the belt around right, his head. To actually it's fight. It's like his own like, wow. brass knuckle brown wow. leather belt. <laughs> and, my, and, 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 and then now some of the other brothers, they know him. Right. They, so this other guy didn't know him. And, and they're like, oh, that's just... That's just uh, that's just my Mike. He he's a turkey. Just like that. You know they say wow. they say the word turkey all right, the time. Right. You know, the old the old old black dude. That, right. Hey turkey, <laughs> you a turkey, Mike? If I get your turkey right here, oh, really? I get your you call me a turkey. I'm a ham sandwich. <laughs> I ain't no turkey. <laughs> he was just He was crazy. Really? And that was him. Wow. So I I started realizing that's who I've become on the stage. Right. And that's what's taking me to the new level in the last few years of like, you know, as a comedian, you think you're gonna find your voice right away. Some comedians do, but it's pretty rare, man. Right. I mean, I just feel like the last few years, actually working on the cruise ships and doing so many different headline shows on there has taken me to a whole new level that never would have happened. What about you your know? father? He saw you perform? He seen you perform? Yeah, he's, he, my dad passed in 2009, oh, sorry, but uh, thank you. But, um, you know, I kind of cried about it yesterday on Father's Day about uh, him not getting to see me star in the movie Rivers Nine. Right. That you know that was my biggest movie. He did see me on uh, The Sopranos, but I don't know if he saw me on Without a Trace. I remember when I was on America's Got Talent, he was mad that it was running between Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> and was he so really? He was like aggravated. What are you really? on? So I'm calling. Really? Just watch it. <laughs> yeah. The wheel, the wheel. I did the wheel. <laughs> really? It was always with the wheel. <laughs> so he was all <laughs> aggravated. <laughs> so, yeah. But, that is really funny. But the, gr the greatest quick thing was, yes. I was in the movie Down to Earth where I had lines with Chris Rock and my lines got cut, but of course you see the movie, I'm in the movie, there's just me, Regina King, and um, Chris Rock. Yes. And Chaz Palminteri is in the movie as well. And what happened was uh, my dad Call, is sitting there with my mom. There's nobody there. They're like the Dollar Theater in New York. And, it's, and my dad, this is what my mom said. She goes, I swear to you. She's like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what he's on. I'll be right back. So he goes up to the projector booth. Bam, 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 bam. Banging on the thing. The guy's like, uh, he really? hello? Right, uh, right, right. And he goes, yeah, my son is in this movie. <laughs> Could you fast forward to his part? <laughs> yes, We're the did. only ones here. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> wow. And the guy goes, who's your son? <laughs> and he goes, I don't know. He's the hot dog guy. He goes, <laughs> Does he have lines? Forward? I don't think the hot dog guy has lines. <laughs> he doesn't have lines. We're out of here. <laughs> and, and I guess my mom said you could hear him yelling the whole time. Getting really? my mom walking down. Come on, Peggy. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> He doesn't even have any lines. He was intense. <laughs> wow. And you know him. He oh, was yeah. crazy. Like, Man. you know, my dad used to spank my friends. I mean, really? You know, I mean, like, I'm like, he's not yours. Neither are you. All right, beat his butt. Uh, you know, like, he was that guy. Wow. You know, the projectionist had yes. never seen a guy wrap a belt around his <laughs> head. Right to get ready. You guys are learning from me. Yeah. Exactly. The belt around yeah. the head. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what about yourself, Keith? Who are some of your favorite comments? Um... It's kind of an eclectic group. I'd call, I'd say three. Miller in the old days, okay. Dennis Miller. Yes. Uh, Carlin, and my favorite is Rock. Oh, really? I love Chris Rock because he makes a statement, you know, and, uh, I, and I kind of learned this with the British guy, that the guy I was talking about earlier that yes. used to be the big age. He told, taught me this, and it was a big thing because comics always think, well, 
you know, set up punchline, right? Mm -hmm. And it's who's funniest. But no, it's who can, it's not only being funny, it's who can get the audience under a spell. Mm. And politics, religion, and show business are all the same. It's the reason Obama won in 2008 is because of that ability to get an audience under a spell. Mm -hmm. His cadence when he talks brings you in. It glazes. Yeah, it doesn't just bring you in. You. It right. hypnotizes right, you. Right, right. It's a hypnotist. Yeah. So that's what Rock does. He makes a statement. He says, you know, can dad get the last piece of chicken? You know that bit. Can <laughs> dad, dad get yeah, the last chicken. piece of chicken? <laughs> and then he the defends best. that. Right. And then he makes the U-turn at the exactly. end. Exactly. But he doesn't necessarily say something. And then there's a punchline six seconds later, like a danger field. You know? Yes. Danger yes. field. Yes. He says something and then there's a punchline. Absolutely. You know it's coming. So you're going like, how does he do that? How does he talk that long with no laughs? Right. But it's because he gets that set up and then that long thing gets him under a spell. And then the other thing that was genius about him and Gervais do this really well. And right. Louis C.K., there's a beginning, middle, and end. He, he does it really well. Right. He'll tell a story and there's a beginning, middle, and end. Right. Versus a guy that just does, like Stephen Wright just does, really clever mm -hmm. one-liners, you know. Um, so that's what I like about Chris Rock. He, great comic. He, he's just, oh, he's just. Yeah, great comic. You know, I could watch his, like the HBO special. Right, here. right. Over I could over. literally watch watch it 10 times right. in a row, and I wouldn't get sick of watching right. it. Every time you new, watch it, you see something different, too. Every, every time. time. They say his new tour is the best he's ever done. Really? It's coming yeah. out right now. A lot of my buddies are working. They're writing for him and stuff, and they say it's. I mean, because he won the Emmy for the other one. Yes, he said, yes, this he next one yeah. Even is better. the best thing you're ever going to see. Oh, that's TV. fantastic. So I'm excited about it. Well, he, he's talented. Oh. Now, I want to get your opinions about, about the three that I, that I think were just amazing. That is Joan Rivers, Don Rickles, and Richard Pryor. I'd like to hear all of you give me some comments about those three comics that I've always loved. Tim? Uh, well, the thing with uh, Richard Pryor is so good is, uh, first of all, he's so versatile. Very. So he can do his characters. He can... Uh, be extremely honest. Right. He could, uh, like Jimmy, you know, the beginning, middle, and end. He could tell one-liners. He can act amazing. Uh, Joan Rivers was, uh, she could, I've seen her live. She was, you saw her live? Yeah, she could. How was that? Oh, it was amazing because she's not afraid, you know, she wasn't afraid but she was to go anywhere. Even if the audience didn't go with her. She went. It didn't matter. They right. kind of came around just to her. Audacity of right. going to those subjects. And Don Rickles was uh, the amazing thing I found with Don. He could pick on you. Not only do people enjoy being picked on, but even if they weren't, his you know they call him Mr. Warmth. But mm -hmm. at the <laughs> end, he's complimenting you, and you mm -hmm. forget everything that he made fun of you because he was so good at turning it around. Absolutely. That's how you what know, I learned. You know, one thing about Joan Rivers too, I was going to say is I saw an interview with her where she talked about categorizing and actually keeping. A, a index card, a three by of, five, a three by five yeah. of every joke she mm -hmm. ever told in yeah. her entire yeah. life. Mm -hmm. I could yeah. not believe that. Yeah, yeah not only she, yeah. she would have her cards uh, in her later years when I saw her uh, on the floor, but she, mm -hmm. the great thing is she would she would be honest about it. She would pick them up and show you, and she would ad lib in between. So you knew she was naturally funny. Wow. So she had her jokes and then her just uh, ad libbing was just amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. Def I, I agree with you. I agree with you. What about yourself, Jim? What are your thoughts about that? Um, I mean, <coughs> I, I loved Richard Pryor, of course, what, when I was younger, to watch him tell the stories and just to see him, see where he'd go with the thing, you know, the thing about, you know, the, the, the black guy jumping the fence or the dog jumping the fence and, and the dog hated him. But his grandpa died, or somebody had died, and the dog's like, rrr, rrr, and he's like, what? What's wrong, Rich? And he's like, but man, my grandpa died. He's like, oh, man, I was gonna eat you. <laughs> like he just, you know, he <laughs> goes, but he's, I will give <laughs> you a pass <laughs> today. You know, today. And, and it was so great. Like, and then to hear the stories of Richard Pryor. I mean, he was a. Uh, his mother was a, a prostitute. They, he grew up in the a brothel and all that stuff. And then he went to jail, and uh, supposedly he had never been. Uh, he wasn't assaulted in jail because he would, he would do jokes. <laughs> They'd be jokes. trying to bend him over, and he'd be like, "No, no, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he'd be just telling them jokes the whole time. And he was like, this kid, he was so great." And uh, Joan Rivers, uh, one of my all-time favorites. My wife is mad at me to this day because. Uh, 
we were supposed to go see her, and um, she, she, but she was doing like a speaking event or something. Mm -hmm. It wasn't her regular stand up. But I said, she's going to be funny. Any? I go, yeah, but it's not. I want to see her stand up. I want to see this new stuff she's doing since her doc. And then all of a sudden, then she'll, she passed. And I mean, I was just devastated. She was one of my all time favorites. I mean, and of course, you know, um, as you as you look at the women now that the women comedians who are who are great. They uh, there's the talk show. She had a talk show years ago, but Johnny Carson had got jealous or whatever happened. Yeah, and, it's not clear. And, and, and right, yeah, so right. we don't know what really right. went down there. But the Don Rickles is uh, one of my all-time favorites. Oh, yeah. I've seen him several times live. Met him um, one time. Uh, I took my mom and dad to Atlantic City, and I remember the alarm and the the. Um, like it was like bah, 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 during the set, and it just kept going like every few minutes, and people were like clearing out right. of uh, the, the 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 you know the theater or whatever at the uh, Trump Taj Mahal, and uh, or the President Taj Mahal, right? So, <laughs> right, 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 right. And and and, uh, and, and uh, he's up there and he's just telling jokes, and and uh, my mom and dad are like, we should go. I go, I go. Do you think if there's an issue? They're gonna let him stay up and do jokes, <laughs> right, right, right. and it's like you have to leave the building. They're <laughs> right. saying this, right? And, and then his famous line was that he would always use it everywhere <laughs> on any talk show, and he goes, he goes, he goes. You think they're gonna let me burn up here for a lousy hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, it was so great. Uh, so then, and then all of a sudden, then you start seeing people coming back, and I mean, he did an hour, and he was just. The respect that he had for the opener, keep it going. I found this girl. She's a, he'd always have like a singer or someone right. in front of him, and I learned that from him about like making fun, like if a, a girl's a Latina or a black guy or an Asian or, or a Canadian, it anybody. European, anybody. Yeah, anybody was that. So risk. I started learning to never say, "Yeah, I don't like Jehovah's Witnesses" or "I hate Jehovah's Witnesses." I would never say that. I go, I like Jehovah's Witnesses, but and <laughs> that's that, Don Rickles. Yeah, that was the way of doing it. Right. So I learned how to do that right. from watching him. Right. He was one of my heroes. I gotta tell you, I uh, maybe it was two thousand and six or five. I met him. He was at uh, there was a place in in Beverly Hills. It was now it's Whole Foods. Before it was called Mrs. Gucci's, <clears throat> and so on either Cannon or Camden, one of those streets. <laughs> But I was uh, I got there really early, and he's coming down the aisle. He and his wife. And first I thought, is that really him? He was very very petite gentleman. So I got closer and it was him. And so I was just looking at him. He said, "Okay, it's me, kid. I'm, I'm down." Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did that. That's how he is. Like, yeah. And I said, I said, "Yes, sir." I said, "Well, can I shake your hand?" So I put my hand out. He said, no, I'll slap you in the face. And he slapped me in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I'll slap you in the face. He said, no, I'll slap you in the face. <laughs> so I put my hand out and he slapped oh me in my, my face. God. And I, I just looked at him and he said, well, what do you do, kid? I said, well, I'm, I'm a physician. What kind of damn physician are you? He just went off for like three minutes talking about physicians. So I, I really couldn't say much because I was in awe that it was really him. This was Don Rickles. I mean, a legacy, yeah. a legend I'm talking to. So I, I'm looking at him. And finally, he says, anything else you want from me? <laughs> I said, no, I just want to shake your hand. He said, I told him to slap you in the face. You shake my hand, I'm slap you in the face. So I put my hand out. Of course, he does slap me in my face, and I shake his hand. And he says, you know, I have a really good feeling about you. And he put his hand on my shoulder. And he said, I just have a feeling whatever you do is going to be very successful. He said, you just do one thing, be authentic. Mm -hmm. I've never forgotten that. So I looked at him and I said, are you authentic? Uh, he said, I'm as authentic as they effing come. He said that to me just like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at him and I said, well, can I hug you now? He said, no, handshake was enough. Uh, and then he hugs me. <laughs> you know, and then he walks away. And I've never forgotten that. That was a very visceral. Oh, uh, it was a, I, I, I can't, it's, it's still in the words. Yeah, it was really worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. one of those uh, 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 ineffable moments, you know. Uh, that that uh, that I actually met greatness. You know, I mean, I, I've met a lot of great people. You know, from from Whitney Houston to Patti LaBelle. I mean, a, a lot of great athletes. But him, it was different. It was it was eye to eye. 
You know, he didn't look down. He didn't make me feel less than. He just talked to me like a human being. Right. And, and spoke to me for about eight or nine minutes. We stood there. And, uh, you know, so, so he's really one of my favorites. I never saw him in concert, though. That's one thing I regret. I really mm-hmm. regret. What, what about yourself, Keith? Um, well, let's go to that first. Sure, sure. What, what's really interesting, what, to me, what you just said. Yes. Because there's a, different ways of making it in comedy. You know, yes. there's like, the hardest is just be authentic, yes. really funny, and you're, uh, the, you're that person. Exactly. And, and not only that, you create a hole into the portal of comedy that's never existed before. Right. That's what he did. Yes, he did. There's no one like him ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you, you can't say, oh, well, there was somebody 20 years ago like him, and yeah. then there was, there's nobody like him. Nobody. So, and what he did with you, just that little, what you said in right. that conversation, going one way, then coming back the other right. way, with the sincerity, is why he got away with what he did. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because another person would try that, they'd end up getting shot or somebody would start a fist fight. So to know, to be able to feel people that well in a crowded room and know when to push their buttons and when to back off, Mm. that's the genius of Don Rickard. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Now, the genius of Pryor, now again, this is in my humble opinion. Yes, yes. Is if you took what Pryor said and you put it on a piece of paper, then people will go, you can't do that. That's not funny. Mm-hmm. You just go, there's nothing funny about that. Yet he would go on and do it and have people bent over begging him to stop. Absolutely. They couldn't even get a breath. Absolutely. That to me is the genius of Pryor. And there's very few people. He's kind of that. I would put oh, him in. I would in, agree. Yeah, Jimmy I, is. Jimmy's I like that. I agree. I call them, they can sell ice to an Eskimo. Yes. And make them mm-hmm. glad they bought the ice. Right. Even though they didn't need it. Even though they didn't even even though right. it's useless Absolutely. to them. That's what Jimmy does. Right. That's what Pryor does. Right. You know, uh, now Rickles created his own porthole. Yes. Then what about Rivers? What do you think about her? Okay, so I let's get to Rivers. This is really like an that. interesting conversation because okay. you yes. name three people right. that are really com- they're all really completely different. Very, areas. very. Okay, so and this is interesting about comedy. Rivers to me is. There's three things about her that's really interesting. Yes. The first is she's a woman. Correct. And she's kind of the first one to break through that. Right. Uh, now, if you think about it now, we had Joan Rivers, even in that same time frame with like Phyllis Diller, right. Lucille Ball. I mean, they were all Or you can go further there. back, uh, Moms Maybelline. Moms Maybelline, absolutely. People that absolutely. maybe people don't know now, but they right. were like, bar- she was a big barrier breaker, Moms very Maybelline, much so. because very it's like, so. I can't think of another black woman like in late 50s or early right. 60s that was on major television. Right. But she La- did. Black it. woman as well as lesbian. Think about that. How many how many exes socially would people say she had against her? And yet and she still broke rose, through. Still broke through. Absolutely. So she becomes to me a lot like Rickles. Mm, I don't know what so. it is she had, right. but no one else had that and she had it and so she those kind of people are like I don't even know. Maybe it's just God. Here, right. Here's an angel for you exactly. to break through that portal. They really are iconic. They, like right? you said, there's only one mold, and once they were done, it was broken. That's it. It was only them. Yeah. And it, you may, maybe in 100 years from now, you might see another one maybe. like that. Maybe. Right. But right. chances are probably not. Absolutely. So Rivers, she's interesting to me because there's the woman thing. Right. Then there's the... Uh, uh, when you, I, I would go right to the three by five cards. Right. That's an example of because she's kind of set up punchline, set up punchline. Right. But there's like a discipline there of like the words. You know, yes. if you put one more word in it, you know, the, Jimmy can put as many words in it doesn't matter because you're you're buying Jimmy. Correct. You're buying Jimmy's personality. Right. But some comics like Tim, I would say, is a wordsmith. You know, yeah. so so what it is is that she was like disciplined on the three by fives, right. and those words are all going to be in the right place. Right. And then she's a woman, and she's going to sell them. That's true. Well, I, I think you know when we look when we look at historically, I mean, figures like like Pryor and and Rickles and John Rivers. I think, as you said so eloquently, the molds have been broken for those people. Oh. I mean, so I think it's great now to have you three that really make your own molds, that you set the bar high now for other people to do what you do mm-hmm. and to do it well and to do it because you have such a passion for it. Now, I want to ask you guys, would, do you have anything that we can talk about that's coming up that I can let people know about? 
And then also to give you a social media platform so that people can reach out to you. Uh, Tim? I'm actually working with Jimmy. Uh, we're uh, currently filming uh, our uh, sitcom. Uh, Jimmy's better at uh, plugging it. Than yeah, so we, we created the show Not For Nothing, which is about three uh, blue-collar uh, actor comedians Yes. You know, running around L.A., taking meetings, lunch, lunches that really are going nowhere, dealing with their lives, their relationships, and everything. It's now on Amazon Prime right now. So you're, you're And what's fan. the name of it again? It's called Not For Nothing. Not For so Nothing. Just put Jimmy Della Valley, Not For Nothing. It should come right up uh, in uh, Amazon Prime. Okay. And they can watch the pilot, and then we're yeah. going to shoot the rest of the season later this year. Great. Um, also, I um, am the co-host on the TV talk show, um, Flores and Friends, which uh, I've had Tim has been a head, one yes. of the head writers there now, Fantastic. as well as Keith uh, is writing and just did stand up on it and killed Keith actually great. murdered great so that first was, time that was really great. Fantastic. yeah so it's got a great TV taping of that and then uh, we're about to do a, a major comedy tour called New York Stand Up Guys awesome. in New Zealand and Australia all over Europe about our tour as well, and uh, Keith might end up coming with us as well. That'd be so great. We're That'd pretty excited great. about everything. Congratulations. And Keith's going to be part of Not For Nothing. He'll be uh, writing and be one of the actors in our mix of people. So it's like a blue-collar side felt type thing. It's, and, it's fantastic. Yeah. What about yourself, Keith? Anything um, coming up? That, just basically that. That's uh, a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. And then this week I'm going to... Is it Carson City? Yeah. Carson City, I had to ask him. He's the booker. Oh, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> the, the Nugget. I'll be there this Friday. Great. Congratulations. Now, what about social media? How can he reach out to you? What are your Instagram or Facebook uh, or it's websites? It's my name, so people uh, Spell never Spell it know. out for them. <laughs> uh, well, my website's Tim Who, W-H-O. It can okay. make it a lot easier. Home immune, people aren't going to. Yeah, correct. So, <laughs> they can go right to Tim correct. Who. It has all my uh, Facebook uh, and all that stuff. Fantastic. YouTube. Uh, MySpace. Great. And what about yourself, Jimmy? So you can go to JimmyDelaValley.com or FunnyJimmy.com. You can get my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, anything there. You just click. You get my VIP Facebook. It's all right oh, yeah. there. Or at Jimmy Della Valley for Twitter as well as Instagram and all those things. Fantastic. What about yourself, Keith? Keith Ross Nelson and Facebook pops up, IMDb, Instagram. It's all under all Keith there. Ross Nelson. Fantastic. Well, I, want, I want to thank these great guys for being here today, Tim Jimmy and Keith, great, great show. I, I always find it refreshing to talk to comedians and, and actors because the, their, their lives are so complex. And many people think they're just funny. Well, along with funny comes a lot of complexity, a lot of complication, and a lot of genius. So I'm really grateful that they shared them, their time with us today. So I want to thank them. Please reach out to them. They're, they're multi-talented actors as well as writers as well as comedians. So this is Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Thank you so much for watching. I, please join me on my social media platforms, Fitter to Fitter. <laughs> That's, that's funny Twitter. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so, Trademark that. Trademark. Exactly. Fitter. So you can join me on, on Twitter, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and of course, Twitch TV. We do that broadcast the first Saturday of every month. So it's Dr. Levi. God bless you. Be nice to the veterans. Remember, those men and women are the reasons that we have our sustained freedoms. All right. Have a great week. This is Dr. Levi. Peace.